Hey guys, welcome back to another Tech Tip Tuesday here at Motion Raceworks. Today we're covering a topic that's very seldom talked about. It's one of the key components in an effective and uh, well-designed fuel system, and that is the vent size that's used for the fuel tank. So there's always a lot of talk about fuel pump inlet size and feed line and return line and all that stuff. Uh, but one thing that a lot of people uh, look past and forget completely is the fuel vent size. And the reason why this is pertinent is we just got off of race week and I saw a lot of this. And rightfully so, it's just something that's never covered, very seldom talked about. And it can cause some of the most distress and problems in your fuel system and fuel system design and it's actually a cause for a lot of fuel pump failures and the biggest thing that I can tell you here just like a PCV system catch can system on an engine you can never over vent a fuel system on your vehicle where people get in trouble is a lot of times nowadays with EFI swaps there's all these popular bolt-in solutions so it's basically a factory tank that's been converted over and then people go to a bigger pump you know if the 72 Nova had a uh, factory fuel tank in it, it was using a small carbureted pump to pull fuel up to the engine. Uh, virtually no flow. You know, we're talking about something that made 160 horsepower, even if it made 300 horsepower. But by the time you start putting um, a 340 or 450 or 525 or double, triple of those into these fuel tanks, and then you ignore A, the return line size, and B, the vent line size, uh, you're just opening yourself up for a lot of disaster. Uh, when we build a fuel cell, this is actually a fuel cell that we're building for Brian's Extreme Blazer Race Week project. Basically, this fuel cell is a uh, start from scratch, everything perfect type of situation. And on this fuel cell, we're going to be running a five gallon a minute pump, which is a ton of fuel. Um, and there's even people running seven and 10 gallon a minute pumps. Um, we're going to run a number 10 line size on it. We could even go to a number 12. Uh, if we were going to the 10 gallon a minute pump, I'd run a number 12. Our friend Jeff Stacy at Aeromotive says at the very minimum, you want to have one line size down from the inlet size on your pump. So we run a 12 to that five gallon a minute pump. So we're going to run a 10. But like I said, you can't over vent a fuel tank. So we could easily go to a 12 or 16. But we know that that 10 works because that's the size that we have on our Nova and it doesn't have problems. If you think about how things work, just like a radiator, as pressure increases, temperature increases. So, you know, if you have a too small of a vent line, like on a factory tank, you might have like a little 5 16 nipple, and you're moving tons of fuel, which is causing pressure, just like your engine has, just like a uh, radiator, and eventually that pressure is gonna start building up and working against the force of everything else in the system. It's gonna work against the return line, so the fuel can't get pumped back. It's gonna heat the fuel up, which is in turn gonna cause problems for the, how the car runs. Uh, it's gonna boil the fuel, which can ruin the pumps, obviously make the car run bad, and it's just all around a bad thing. So having that factory style size is a problem. That can be remedied pretty easily by just a bulkhead fitting. I know it's hard to weld on those steel tanks, especially if they're old and crusty. You can drill a hole, uh, use a bulkhead. Um, on a fuel cell, you can always, you know, especially on aluminum ones, just put a bigger vent size on it. The other thing to keep in mind is some of these fuel cells come with these crappy check balls. They're just a $2 uh, check valve. Um, basically, it's a tip over rollover valve and that's something that can get clogged, stuck, or be gummed up and not work properly. And then if you take those apart, sometimes they just don't flow that much. So it might be a 6 a.m., but what's going around the check valve is just not very much. So that's something to pay attention to. As far as how to run your vent line, there's a couple different ways. Uh, you can still use a check valve, just make sure you use a quality one that has a, uh, a decently sized internal passages. You can also take what I would suggest, and at the very minimum on any setup, is to take your line off and loop it two or three times. If the fuel is kind of moving around and splashing up, it's not gonna make it all the way around that wound up portion to go out because you don't want fuel actively leaking out of the vent. We're trying to get the air out and not the fuel. If you really wanna go um, top notch, you can use a catch can similar to our oil catch can that has internal baffling and it'll vent really well and obviously it has a big enough internal passage to run all of that stuff. 
Uh, one cool thing I wanted to show you guys on this tank, because we're mounting it underneath the floor on Extreme Blazer, uh, we're gonna use our billet breathers. So we're actually gonna put those right on top and that reduces the overall height of the fitting stack up and the hose end so that it comes right out and then it's easy to connect. Uh, these work great in that. Uh, we found a million uses for these things ever since we made them. They were great on valve covers. They were good as oil returns and then uh, the most recent is they can be used for that. So on race week, one thing I haven't really talked about in like summary, fuel pumps died nonstop. It was not uh, dependent on brand. Every brand was failing um, a lot when you have 300 plus cars that have aftermarket fuel systems on them. It's just very common. A lot of that can be attributed to too small of return lines, uh, improper design on the feed. Some of it can be uh, vent line size and everything in between. So just a shameless plug to this video. If you have questions and you're building a new fuel system or a new uh, hot rod or aftermarket fuel setup, definitely give us a call. If you go to our homepage, I'll have Chad add this in the video. You can scroll down about one, Eh, one full page and we have a fuel system builder form and what that does is it gives you the ability to fill out a form your goals uh, what your setup is what type of fuel you're running just a quick easy two minute form and then when you hit send it sends it over to our guys and uh, we go ahead if you uh, pay the deposit on it we will put together an exact fuel system that will fit your exact needs full as much or little as you want fittings line hoses filters regulator pump everything to meet your current and future needs and goals. And I'll be honest with you, the people that were running our fuel system setups on race week, this isn't a brag, they just weren't breaking down. And that's not because we're doing anything um, groundbreaking or super special, not like we're blessing the fuel system. Uh, we're just simply putting together a match system that has all of the components to work together properly so that your fuel pump isn't working too hard or getting pushed back on a return or overheating the fuel because of the design. So we're just here to help you guys. We charge nothing extra that actually that deposit goes towards the fuel system. So it's basically a free service to ensure that you get exactly what you need to make your fuel system work the best it can. All right guys, so that's it. I could go into all the science and do a bunch of calculations and stuff. I'm really not that good at math. I just wanted to let you know that the vent is something you definitely need to pay attention to and when in doubt, oversize it because it'll put a lot less stress on the return of your fuel system, which can put stress on the fuel pump. It will heat the fuel up less and it'll overall make your system work better. And that's what we're here to help you guys do. A good fuel system will make you a lot happier and break down a lot less on the road or on the track. And uh, you'll be happy you did it. Thanks for tuning in. If you have ideas for the next Tech Tip Tuesday, drop them below. I got this one actually off of YouTube comments, so I'll be happy to answer some more. Drop them down below and we'll see you guys next time.